GQ, meanwhile, has a piece profiling Russell Westbrook, where the writer is very critical of the point guard, but does call him the heart and soul of the Thunder. Here's an excerpt from it. He's a throwback to brilliant but flawed stars like Tracy McGrady, Rashid Wallace, Chris Webber, Vince Carter, and of course, Allen Iverson. Players defined as much by their inconsistencies and shortcomings as their sheer ability. He's frequently criticized for poor, uh, making poor decisions late in games or chasing down some private demon that's only tangentially related to the task of winning basketball games. But his passion and determination are undeniable. He's often the Thunder's greatest liability, but he is still their heart and soul. The article is titled God Bless Russell Westbrook. May he never change. Skip, mm. do you agree with this viewpoint? Stephen A. Smith, I'm going to be honest with you up front. You pushed before the show to do this topic, and the more I think about it, the more I don't want to do this topic today because I don't want to say anything to rile up or set off Russell Westbrook Aww. any more than he was the other night. Because you That's know, why I pushed for it. I, you got me. So I'm backed into a corner here. Russell, you were great the other night. And, and seriously, from my heart, Russell Westbrook was great the other night. Didn't shoot the ball very well in game four, but 15 assists are 15 assists. He got the ball where it needed to be to the hot shooters at the right time in the right moments. God bless Russell Westbrook. I get that. The writer's point is he detailed all the glaring, obvious negatives that we talked about for seven years on this show. Russell's been in the league for eight. He, he detailed the, the, the late, out-of-control turnovers, the what-was-he-thinking shot selection, playing out-of-control in different phases of the game where he he's, gets a little too fast going up and down the court. We, we get all that. All, all that's Russell Westbrook. But his conclusion is that he's so much fun to watch. He's riveting on a nightly basis. He is, to use your term, big box office. I watch him like crazy. I watch this team almost as much as I watch my Spurs, in large part because of this guy, because he is a force of nature, a freak of nature. He plays with a monomaniacal, egomaniacal rage to win or at least to star. I'm never sure which one it is. Does he want to be the man in Oklahoma City? Is it, a, is it all about Russell Westbrook? Or, or is it about winning? I'm never quite sure. So it's fascinating to follow him. I get all that. And I've seen great maturity over the last three years in Russell, in part because I think the coaching staff has shown him that triple doubles are pretty cool because they have historical perspective to him. You can set historical triple double marks that will be forever remembered. And to do so, he had to distribute the basketball better. So instead of his his swoops to the hoop, his, his just flying, sometimes out of control, passes at the basket, he started to drop the ball off to Steven Adams for a dunk, to Enos Canner for a little lay-in. And all of a sudden, the, the assists over the last three years went from 6.9 to 8.6 to this year 10.4. That's pretty great. Got no issue with that. I think you're seeing Russell grow up. But in the end, I, I want to remind everyone why I got upset with Russell seven years ago. I was such a big Kevin Durant fan, especially when he was at the University of Texas and coming into the league. I predicted he would win multiple NBA scoring titles. And right away, it was clear to me that Russell Westbrook, the point guard, had the audacity to think he should shoot it more than Kevin Durant. And Stephen A., I was protecting my guy, tore me apart that the point guard who gets the, the right, who has the right to choose who shoots would more often choose himself than Kevin Durant, his co-superstar, who to me is a better scorer, obviously, than Russell Westbrook, who's notoriously not a very good three-point shooter and still takes too many threes. But, but there's so much freakish talent involved with both players that, that the other night you saw the mix, and it worked. When it works like that, they can win an NBA title like that. It just doesn't always mesh the, the way it did the other night. So I get what the writer's saying, and I thought of you immediately because you covered the great Allen Iverson, and I'm sure you see some Allen Iverson and Westbrook. They're, they're not quite the same, but, but some, is that fair to say? Yeah, it's fair to say. Uh, what I would say to you is that I, I thought the article was, uh, for the most part, accurate. Um, I didn't find it to be... Uh, 
is critical as much as I found it to be factual. I think that the things that he pointed out about Russell Westbrook were, were on point. Um, and I don't happen to believe that it's a bad thing either. I mean, there are some things that drive you crazy, but if you take those things away, then you take away Russell Westbrook. And if you lose Russell Westbrook, you're losing somebody so gifted, so tremendously athletic, uh, that brings so much to the table. You certainly don't want to compromise that. Uh, when I think about him and the comparisons to Allen Iverson, Obviously, I speak to Allen Iverson all the time, and I can tell you right now, that is his favorite player. Yep. There's no one he loves more than Russell Westbrook. There's no one he believes best exemplifies and epitomizes who he was as a player than Russell Westbrook. But here, according to this article, Skip, is something that I would like to point out where the dichotomy between him and Allen Iverson goes, and it divides even more so. There's a, there's a paragraph in here, and it's talking about the distinction between wreaking havoc on opponents and pulverizing his own team. It says here, therein lies the central tension, and it was largely absent last night, talking about game four. Russell Westbrook can come across as, strange, as strangely oblivious to just how much presence he has, like a kid unsure of how his mood affects those around him. That was never Ivan, Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson wasn't oblivious to it. Yep. He just didn't care. There's a difference. Yep. And therein lies the difference between Allen Iverson and Russell Westbrook because here's how. Russell Westbrook is just doing his thing and being Russell Westbrook. This guy is a good guy. You know, he can be a bit feisty, cantankerous, and all of that stuff. But I'm just saying model citizen, you know, no checkered past, goes out on the court, the most athletic point guard we've ever seen. But his role is to be the point guard and to run the team and be the sidekick to Kevin Durant. And sometimes it appears challenging because he doesn't seem willing or seems oblivious to the fact that that's the role he's supposed to be playing. Yep. Whereas with Allen Iverson, he was really Larry Brown's two guard, number one. He had the ultimate green light because Larry Brown surrounded him with basically defenders and, and, and second tier players and beyond. But more importantly than that, Allen Iverson was never oblivious to anything. A matter of fact, he was sensitive to it all because he knew the weight that weighed on his shoulders. He knew why. He knew there was a generation of individuals looking at him for better or worse. And there were enemies and friends everywhere. And so all of that stuff is what he took on the court with him. And the level of defiance and the intestinal fortitude that he had to have within himself to go out there night in and night out and do what he did is something Russell Westbrook can only fantasize about. And that's if you want a nightmare to come along with that fantasy. Because I don't know if anybody wanted to deal with the kind of stuff that Allen Iverson had on his shoulders every single day he played for most of his career. Russell Westbrook has never had that. He's always had Kevin Durant. Yeah. Plus, he's always been perceived, by and large, as just a mercurial talent who needed to be honed in, but there was nothing else to him. Allen Iverson, you wanted people to, you had people wanting to change his game. You had people wanting to change his life. You had people wanting to change his wardrobe. You had people wanting to change how he wore his hairdo. You had people wanting him to get rid of some of those tattoos. I was one of those, by the way. Mm -hmm. I wanted him to get rid of those, those, some of those tattoos. Some of them, not all of them, but some of them, okay? That's what, that's what it was. That's Allen Iverson. And so when somebody compares him to Russell Westbrook, they might get it right on the side of Russell Westbrook, but I don't believe they completely comprehend and absorb all the things that encompassed Allen Iverson. Because if you did, you would appreciate him even more than this article would intimate. I got it. Okay. Here's why Russell Westbrook from the start offended my old school sensibilities, and you share some of them. Who was the greatest floor general we ever saw in pro basketball? Who ran a Magic, team? Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson, right? Yeah. The ultimate leader on the court, kind of a coach on the court, and, and the ultimate maestro of the Showtime Lakers. Magic was incredibly keen on, on who was in the, the wrong mood if he knew Byron Scott needed to get going. He needed to get him an open look where Byron would make a jump shot to get Byron in the flow in the mix. He knew when James Worthy was a little down, a little off, and he needed to get him a fast break dunk to get him in the flow. 
That was magic. He was completely perceptive, had incredible antenna for what each teammate needed at what moment. And when it was time for magic to take over and score or to take the defensive uh, reliability, you know, to take the tough defensive assignment the way he did Roy Tarpley one, one year in game seven in the finals. He just said, get out of my way. I'm taking Tarpley in the fourth quarter. And he took him out of the game and they won game seven. That's Magic Johnson with perspective. He's the, the opposite of oblivious. While Russell can be just flat out oblivious, tunnel vision. All he knows is I'm going to go. I'm, they can't stop me. They can't stop me. Now, that doesn't mean he's not going to set others up with assists. But, but I don't think he's keenly aware of the feelings of everybody around him, well, including Kevin Durant's feelings. Yeah, you're right about that. But the problem, Skip, is that, on, uh, you know, not to get on you about this, but in your years of being critical of Russell Westbrook, you're sitting here talking about what he's oblivious to. That makes sense. The problem is you've treated him for years as if his transgressions were intentional. When, in fact, it may have been a part of his makeup that you just couldn't help. You see yeah. what I'm saying? No, I, if you, I get it. You, no, if, if, when I'm you with know you better, you do. When you know better, you do better. No, it's just and who he is. And what you don't know, yeah. you don't know. Okay. And he didn't know. Okay, remember, in high school, he was more of a scoring, you know, a two-guard. Right. At UCLA, he played some point guard in a pinch. But the analytics that the Thunder had showed that he did have the capability to distribute when pressed into service. So they said, let's try to figure yeah. out how to make him a point guard. He's still got a whole lot of scoring guard in him. And it's hard. It's not the but, perfect blend for the Thunder. But, 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 but here's, let, let me get on you about this, Skip, because you, you're not wrong, but you, it's incomplete. Listen to this. When you talk about everything you just dissected about Russell Westbrook, and you talk about what the analytics show, okay? If that's a part of your makeup, why are we looking at this guy? instead of the people who've designed and assembled the roster. Wasn't it the same Oklahoma City crew that let go of James Harden? Mm -hmm. Because James Harden wanted his shot? Weren't you the guy on the record that repeatedly said, James Harden is a better point guard for the Oklahoma no City doubt. Thunder than Russell Westbrook. Absolutely. So, 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 so my point is, they made the decision to keep Serge Ibaka. They made the decision to let James Harden go because they knew that James Harden wanted to be, quote, unquote, the man. Because he knew that he was playing a relegated role than what he may have deserved. And that's why he ended up going to Houston and emerging into the star that he is. So if you're Russell Westbrook, and this is your game, and this is what you bring to the table, and this this is what has worked for you. Does that not explain the level of empathy and, 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 and the self-defense mode that Kevin Durant has engaged in and coming to his rescue because he recognizes what this guy is, what his strengths are, and that his weaknesses may be a product of who he is and who he was always allowed to be, and then everybody just ex expects him to change overnight. That's not fair to Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook can pass. A lot of people can pass, but that doesn't make you a point guard. You might know how to pass, but what made Magic Johnson great wasn't just his passing ability. It was his basketball IQ and his ability to lead men. And so if you're a guy that's trying to learn how to grow into that role as opposed to it being something that comes along naturally to you. And Kevin Durant is your man on that squad. There's a maturation process that you got to go through. And I think that sometimes Russell Westbrook is held accountable for things that he shouldn't be held accountable for. It's other, it's other people's job to step up and come to the rescue, meaning Sam Presti at the time, Scott Brooks. You know, like you told me, when Scott Brooks lost the job, part of it was because people questioned his ability to legitimately coach Russell Westbrook. Yep. I don't know if that's true, me personally, because I think Scott Brooks is a good coach. But nevertheless, if these things are being said, how is that on Russell Westbrook when you got an organization that built guys around him that never found somebody to play that point guard? But you lost James Harden and Reggie Jackson. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on now. Okay, I got to look at Presty and him and ask that question. Okay, remember on James Harden, that was a question of you just didn't want to pay the luxury tax. Remember, they, right. they could have kept him if they wanted to pay the freight to keep him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then yeah. whether it would have clicked or not with the three of them from that point forward, that's another question. But, but my point to you about Scott Brooks was it, it wasn't that, that he couldn't coach. It, it's that they didn't let him coach Russell Westbrook. That, that 
Presty loves Russell Westbrook. That's his prize. That's 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 his diamond in the rough. I don't blame him one bit. Well, I know, but it's it's his guy, and I think I'm told that within the confines of the organization, they let Russell have his way, sometimes to a fault, where he gets to do pretty much what he wants to do. Stars you, on every team okay, get that. All right, but there's a co-star named Kevin Durant. And to me, the reason he always leaps to the public defense of Russell Westbrook is the guy who's got some Magic Johnson in him is Kevin Durant. Not as a floor leader, per se, with, as a point guard, but as a leader of that team, the real locker room leader of that team, the guy who has some of that magic in him, is Kevin Durant. He's trying to make that. it work. You know, he's trying to keep everybody as happy as he can keep them, including himself on occasion. Well, let, let's give Kevin Durant a bit more credit than that. Kevin Durant, I've seen Kevin Durant getting on Russell Westbrook this year a little bit more than he ever has. And vice Kevin Durant versa. is holding yeah. other people Kevin Durant is holding other people accountable, just like himself. Kevin Durant is no is, is nobody's sidekick. Uh, he's nobody's co-star. Kevin Durant is the star. Make no mistake about that. He's just got a calm, cool demeanor, and the sun doesn't shine no, and I got set. It with him in his own mind. Okay. He's less selfish than that, but it works for him. All right. That doesn't work for Russell Westbrook, and okay. there's nothing wrong with that. Remember, my bottom line has always been in, in Russell Westbrook's heart of hearts, heart of hearts, he wants to be the man in Oklahoma City. And obviously, there's only one, the man. And we think, at least I think, that it should have been from the start, Kevin Durant. I, I think in fairness to Russell Westbrook, I don't, I don't think being the man is more important to Russell Westbrook than winning. The brother works hard. I talk to the coaches. I see guys as teammates, etc. They all rave about how hard he works and how much he cares. Everybody can't be the same. Russell Westbrook is his own man. He can't be Kevin Durant, and he shouldn't be maligned because he's not Kevin Durant. He is who he is. That just comes with it. He's still one of the top five talents in the NBA. He could be on my team any day. I think you're a Thunder fan. That's what I think. You got I'm a fan tonight. of those two stars. Yep. I think that they're sensational basketball players, and I give respect to where it's due. I think they're a, tre they're a treasure to the game of basketball. Yep. I agree. Give credit where it's due. They certainly have a lot of accolades, wardrobe accessories. They're missing one. Our next guest has two of those. That would be rings. Mike Miller, two-time NBA champion, 16-year NBA vet sharpshooter in the house. We're going to break down the NBA playoffs with him. Mike, Hello, Mr. On. Miller. How are you? How are Mighty you? Mike. Welcome. How are you doing? Stevie, how are you doing, buddy? What's up, boss? How are you? Good to see you.